Welcome back to another episode of Seeing Fights. Fight Scenes Breakdown. I'm Chad Vasquez. I'm Logan Love. And we have an awesome episode for you all. Today we're breaking down one of the biggest series ever, Squid Game. Before we continue, heavy spoilers. If you haven't already, watch this Korean hit series on Netflix before watching this episode. With that being said, we're looking at the final knife fight between childhood friends, Gi Hoon, played by Lee Jong Jae, and Sang Woo, portrayed by Park Hae Soo. Chad, would you eliminate me for 45 billion won? I would eliminate you for $45. All right, oh, steak knives are out. Yes, it is. And they ain't here for eating. All right, so here we go. All right, wild throws and, okay, here we have a standoff. And in this case, the standoff makes sense, right? Because they're two untrained combatants, unlike all the other breakdowns we've done before. Now standoff, you're meaning this uh, situation in which both are trying to stab each other. Exactly, exactly, okay. they're trying to push through. Okay, and this is good. Gi Hoon is actually attacking the hand, which is creative. It's good that he thought that to do that. And very smartly, Gi Hoon kicks the knife away. Yep, Sang Woo takes off his jacket, because he's unarmed, so he yeah. wants to be armed with something. something. Right. I, I don't know how that disarm happened by Sang Woo. He's trying to beat him with his jacket. Okay, so Sang Woo's trying to eye gouge Gi Hoon, but the problem is there's no floor or, or wall being used for this. So, in fact, there's a lot happening here, right. right? Knives, use of a jacket, and to my point here, this attempt to eye gouge another opponent. Let's, let's break that down. And to be clear, this is different than all of our other videos. These are people that aren't trained, and they're mm. fighting like people that aren't trained. Let's talk about what they could have done better if they had just a little bit more training. Yeah, let's do it. So in Squid Games, both Gi Hoon and Sang Woo used a steak knife. And the question is, is, is a steak knife a good weapon? I'll tell you why it's a great weapon, because it is light. If you go to your kitchen, you get two steak knives, and you have one in what we call an ice pick grip, and another one in what we call a hammer grip, you're pretty well armed against an assailant. I'm not sure I would wanna go against an unhappy, very angry homeowner that's armed with two steak knives, because you can move very quickly with these knives and cause a great deal of damage because they are pointy and they are sharp. So if Chad came at me unarmed with whatever he wanted to come at me for, so here I can do a cut and a stab. There's my grab here. Notice that it opens him up and then I can proceed with multiple attacks, turning him into Swiss cheese as I run away. So in this first exchange, we see a standoff between two armed combatants that don't know what they're doing. So in this sense, it does make sense that they would push through. Sang Woo passes Gi Hoon over this way and then immediately switches so that he's in a choke position. Note, however, Gi Hoon's right hand is completely free. So I could be stabbing the leg, I could be stabbing the clavicle right here, the shoulder, but he ended up slashing the hand, which is still good, dropped the weapon, and was able to extricate himself. Was it realistic? Yes. Again, there were, there were superior things that Gi Hoon could have done, but that wasn't a bad choice by Gi Hoon. So what happened in this exchange is Gi Hoon does a big telegraphing lunge, and Sang Woo ends up capturing the weapon here. He ends up capturing it so well that he's able to release the cloth, get a good grip, and it looks like it's kind of hard to tell, but he does a disarm. I'm assuming he just slams down the hand and uh, then does a disarm. Weapon. Is that realistic? Probably. If two guys aren't trained, that seems pretty realistic to me. If I was Gi Hoon and I had a weapon here, I would never do a straight lunging thrust because I would want to misdirect them first. So I would do some sort of fake. So I'm coming in here, I would come in high and then come in low. Or I would come out from the outside and then come in low. Or I would come in low and then go high. So our producer just offered us $45 to actually do this for you guys. He gets $45 if he disarms me. I get $45 if I stab him. I could use a good lunch, right? Sure. Yeah. Let's do it. All right, you ready? Let's do it. I think I'm ready. I mean, uh, so I'll start with my approach to this. I have not trained with weapons work or anything like that. My logic was, okay, I have a jacket, cloth, well, let's use it to the face. Let's keep the guy away, keep him blinded while I back away because I don't want to get near that knife. 
That's my first game plan. It's just smack and run. That's, that's how I go and about life, baby. That's legit. But honestly, when someone is armed with an edged weapon, the odds are in my favor. The best thing to do is get distance and get as much distance from you and the weapon as possible. And also, look, in a real life situation, abort. Don't be a hero. Don't try to engage an actual weapon like this. In the context of our two characters, they have nowhere to go. So they, they have, have to. to. So that's the case. By the way, Chad, did you know that Scenic Vice is partnered with The Ridge and I have myself this beautiful aluminum navy wallet. I love the durability of the wallet. In case someone tries to steal it from me, I can use it for my self-defense. It won't make mincemeat of them, but it'll get the job done. Maybe next time they'll get you a Ridge wallet too, because I never leave home without mine. Me neither. The Ridge comes over 30 colors, including carbon fiber and burnt titanium. Where's my burnt titanium? I get Chad's balls in my face, I don't get burnt titanium. Now listen, make sure to check the link in the description below and use your Scene of Fights coupon code to get 10% off your Ridge wallet. I love the sleek design, it makes the Chad feel sexy, and it'll make you feel sexy too. For fans who've been watching our episodes, we've covered eye gouging recently on our Punisher episode. Sure. One main big difference though is that there's no wall. As he's pushing and trying to squeeze his eyeball through, Gihun is moving. I mean, very clearly, as I push Logan, Logan's moved backwards. And that's the problem. If Sungwoo, with good training, and his goal, his intentions, was to purposely eye gouge any takedown to put the man on the floor. This could be, from here, double takedown. Or some of the clinch takedown where we can simply grab, squeeze the back, and trip in this fashion and put the man on the floor. From there, his next goal is to get the mount position. This is mount, and a very effective combat position on the ground. What's happening here? Well, one, with my body weight, I am pinning my partner down to the floor. With the assistance of gravity, my position, and Mother Earth, my partner's not going anywhere. From here now, I can use my hands freely to grapple, eye gouge, or probably what I'd recommend, striking, open palm, not close fists, you might break your hand. Or better yet, elbows. Okay, well he's not gonna need that jacket anymore. Just wild punches. Yeah, again, you know, untrained people, so they're just, right. just going at it, just feeling it out, not really thinking. Oh, okay, we have a headlock here by Sung Woo. Mm -hmm. And he's holding to it. Okay, this is cool, this is interesting. When you look at most street fights, or even for the, our, our viewers here, you maybe have been in a hand-to-hand -hand street fight yourself. We hope not, but yeah. yeah. You'd notice that men and women have a similar approach when untrained. They grab the head, they pull the head to the floor to pin the person and beat them. That's what it is, it is instinct. Grappling right. is an instinctual form of combat that every person, all of you that are watching the show right now sure. have. If you ever were to engage someone and you just had a fight, off the top of your head. ki approaches this in a very interesting way. He brings the fight to the floor. Let's break this down. There's some cool stuff here to comment on. And let's show a, an optimal way to approach this, even though there's some logic to both our combatants in this scene. You'll find that headlocks come from untrained people that throw wild punches. But remember, they're also a bit scared of getting knocked out. So it's natural for punches to be thrown to a point where two opponents, when they collide, one of them naturally wraps around the head to a headlock to pull the man down to the floor to punch him here. All right, the big question, how does this person get out? One scenario, Logan has my headlock and he has it in a way where it's a bit loose. There's, there's some space here, maybe because I turned my jaw downward. Well, everyone, if there's space here, I can take the same side hand, go within that space, bring the palm to my head and open up slightly to get my head out and create space. That's assuming if the headlock is a bit loose. Now, what if it wasn't? And we're talking, that thing is just locked in tight, it's around your neck, and you're just, you're not getting out there. Gihun actually did something quite smart. In this case, he suplexed Sangwoo, but since I'm not being paid, what's it, 45 million billion, billion won? One. Don't worry, if I was, I, this guy would be launched. I would be but launched, me, Chad. We're not doing that right now, so here's a much more efficient way of bringing the fight to the ground because Gi Hoon was right. His logic was right. Bring the fight to the ground in order to get out. Let's look mm -hmm. at it. 
I'm going to control Logan's waist, whether with one hand or two. I'm going to take a step to the side, straighten my leg, and knock the man down. It looks like this. As you can see, I have two hands free now. So, if my opponent is very stubborn and doesn't let go, and has a strong grip, I can use my hands to start hypersensitive spine like so, using my chest to go forward and bring my hand back in the same way I did before when I was standing and I was dealing with a loose headlock. It looks like Sung Woo kind of has a mount position, but his Yeah, but his legs up, so there's space there. But again, untrained. Here we are. Okay. Oh, he took the back. Okay. All right. So some instinct here, right? Sung Woo is using his jacket to right. strangle Ki Hong. Okay. Now on the floor. Okay, no hooks right now, so he could spin. So that's the problem. Hmm. Sung Woo, because he's not using his legs, allows Ki Hoon to get out because he can move. All right, so Sang Woo sees the back and uses some good logic here, tries to apply a strangle using his jacket. And when he does, he goes around the throat of Ki Hoon and they fall back like so, right? And so Sang Woo is really strangling. Now, what happens here? He doesn't use his legs. If he had some basic grappling training, he would have his legs involved right away. Because Sang Woo did not have his legs involved, Ki Hoon had a lot of space and mobility to turn towards his opponent and get top position, which allows him to escape. So what could Sung Woo have done better to address this issue? I would cross my legs right underneath one armpit, one's already over the shoulder, like so. I might be able to use it to hold him still as I pull, maybe apply a strangle. I don't know how well he had it on the throat, so I can only comment so far here. But worst case, if this doesn't work, I can always just let go of it and proceed to an armbar, a jujikatame from here. And that's the great thing about having your legs involved in that position. You can switch to other weapons that are nearby. So Chad, would you prefer to choke someone just barehanded or with a tool? If I was in that position, I would just keep it to where I know what to do best. Mm -hmm. Let go of the tool and use my body. I can get better results much faster because that's just how I'm trained. So screw it, throw it, hands involved, right. I'm in a good position, guys have a knife, Let's do it. That'd be my answer. Makes sense. A little scramble. No, nothing crazy here so far. Until... Uh -oh. Steak knife! Okay. And so Sang Woo just stabbed Gi Hoon in the left thigh. Yeah. Oh, and he's followed up with another shot to the left abdomen. That's gonna hurt. That'll leave a mark for tomorrow. But there are probably better targeting areas that Sang Woo could have used. As a rule of thumb, Whenever you want to target someone with a knife, you're looking for the folds of the body or the interiors of the body. What do I mean? So if we look at this, this is the exterior of Chad's thigh. What would be a better thing? Here we have an interior. More nerves are here, more blood vessels are here. The femoral artery is here on the inside of the thigh. What else do we have? Here, we can also have the back of the knee. In this scene, Sang Woo penetrated the left thigh from the outside of Gi Hoon and then did a stab into Gi Hoon's left abdomen. So what Sang Woo could have done, instead of stabbing on the outside, he could have stabbed behind here. And instead of stabbing on the left side, note that the liver is on the right side, right? Have you ever taken a liver shot? Oh, yes I have. And how does that feel? It feels like a aggressive cramp inside your, your organ. Yeah, right. it's annoying. So this is what he could have done had he had just a little bit more training. Okay, so Gi Hoon just threw Sang Woo down by the throat somehow. Oh, He's screaming in pain. in pain, yeah. I would be I screaming would. in pain too. Oh, soccer kick to the head. Gi Hoon is not having a good day. What's very vicious about the game, the extremes are growing where they're changing as a person. So now it's pushed these two men at a point where they have to eliminate each other. Guys will go way back for money. But is that, is that true though? I mean, I, for me, I don't think it would be money. I just wouldn't want to die. So if it had to be between me and you, the question is, is... It's both playing a role, right? Right, It, yeah. it is why you're there. You're right. there to get money and right. people have been eliminated because of that. And then yes, there's a mixture of survival. So it changes how you approach your relationships with people around you, for sure. given the situation. See, I, I think that for me, the bigger impetus would be surviving. I, I don't want to be killed by anyone, let alone a friend. Yeah, so I think we're all in agreement with that, guys. Would you agree? Okay, so now well, I'll, I'll take the money. <laughs> yeah. I'll take the money. They would too, we all would too, right?
Ki-hoon stops a stab with his left hand. Literally. Yeah. So Sung was over Ki-hoon. He's holding off. Okay. Oh, fight. Oh. oh no. No. Oh my gosh. That's brutal. Oh, and it spits up a piece of oh, that's someone's brutal. ankle. That stab, would you think that would have held? I don't know, I don't think so. You know what, let's definitely break down that because there are many options open to Sangwoo. And to add to that, the mount that Sangwoo had over Gi-hoon, it left opportunities for Gi-hoon to do some things if he was slightly trained from a possible certain culture at Paxi Bell and Martial Arts. You could do a Ashigurami. Let's look into what that is and how to apply it here. Sangwoo managed to plunge his knife into Gi-hoon's hand. Let's say there, that's the plunge in. Question, why didn't he just tear it down? Because I have an edged weapon inside someone's body. So this is what I would say to do. Pull this knife down, ripping open the entire palm, extricating the weapon, and repeat to finish the job. Now that we all have that disturbing image in our head, thanks to Logan's details here, let's go back to what's happening with uh, Gihon. What a trained person would do is acquire a position called Ashigarami. It's just a Japanese term that refers to leg entanglements. It's a concept and system that has an attacker use their legs to control their opponent's legs for sweeping and also leg locks. So let's take a look. From here, this space, I'll hip my butt out to the side, giving me an angle. Using my free arm, I'll block this leg to get my knee through right to the hip. My outside leg, or foot rather, will come over to make contact to my knee. As you can see, I have a strong bite on the leg. From here, we have a couple things. I can push Logan down this angle to knock his butt down, so I can hopefully pull the knife out and get top position. Or, and pushing Logan away, and in hopes of also pulling the knife out at the same time and getting my hand free, as I do so, I can use my leg to push his belly, Bring my knee down, which everyone creates what's called heel exposure. For those who are, are not familiar with this, I'll use this connection around the heel as a means of ripping the leg apart. This rotation will rip the ligaments here, and my hip extension can hyperextend the knee, which will also rip more ligaments. So I'm attacking two joints, the ankle and the knee with what's called a heel hook, or more specifically, an outside heel hook. These are two strong options that a bottom person, in this case, Gi-hoon, could have used to get out of that pin, an Ashigarami system. So, Squid Games, final battle. Remember the key context to this whole thing. These are two untrained men that have to engage each other in combat. Under that context, Logan, what do you think? If it was me and I was these guys, I, I would do the same thing. I don't know what I would do differently. Would you have done anything differently, Chad? I think the logic, the instinctual fight logic of untrained people was demonstrated well as we went from one scene to another. Very well. From the knife, to the jacket, to the hand-to-hand, -to, -hand, to the grappling. There was a logic to it. One of the things I liked was the headlock. That's what guys do who are untrained do. They go into headlock. And similarly with the weapons, just these wild swings, these barbarian sort of like attacks. That's what people do when they're untrained. When I first started doing knife work, I did exactly that. I didn't know what I was doing. As you get better, they're very short and they're very narrow, tight movements. These guys look like two guys that didn't know what they were doing, but they were trying to survive. Overall, I think given the context, I thought it was a great fight scene. I would give it an A, Chad. I am with you. I think A's are fair, fair grade. So if you haven't seen it, there's a reason why it's a worldwide phenomenon. Check it out.